This module focuses on linear algebra. Now, linear algebra is one of the core aspects of data mining or multivariate statistics. Many of the techniques rely on linear algebra and the use of what we will call the covariance matrix and operations with the covariance matrix. So the reason this is important is because it helps us analyze multidimensional data because every column in the matrix will represent a variable and every row will represent an observation. So when we use matrices, we're going to have this row-column format, where a certain matrix will basically have a certain number of rows and a certain number of columns. So here we see three matrices. We see A, and it equals, and it's denoted by the brackets, 3, 2, 1, 6, 4, 2, 8, 1, 3, going across horizontally. Matrix B is going to be 3, 2, 4, 1, again horizontally. And C is 1, 5, 9. This is just a one row with three columns. Now, in terms of notation, matrices are denoted by a capital letter in order to distinguish them from the other variables. And they'll be bold-faced as well. In some of the presentations that we have, sometimes the bold isn't as clear, but note that in a lot of textbooks and other journal articles or other documentation, you will see them as a bold face letter. The dimensions of a matrix are always in the form of row by column. So the examples to the right, using the same matrices we had in the previous slide, matrix A is a 3x3 three three matrix. Matrix B is a 2x2 two two matrix, two rows, two columns. And matrix C is a 1x3 matrix, one row by three columns. Now some additional terminology is important. A scalar is a single element or a number represented by a variable. So this is just the normal variable assignment, m equals 2.1 or lambda equals 5.2. A vector is actually going to be a single column or a single row matrix, usually denoted in a lower case. We have a column vector, n by 1, or a row vector, 1 by n. When we refer to the term dimension, it's referring to the number of rows by columns. So we'll say a matrix has m by n dimensions. That would be rows by columns, 3 by 3, 3 by 2, 5 by 6. Another term is called the norm, which is referred to as the length, or the length of a vector, which is the square root of the sum of squares of the elements. And it can be written with two bars or one, but it's most noted as two bars, which is the square root of each one of the items squared. And a normalized vector is basically the vector itself divided by its norm. And we'll denote that by x hat. Now some of the basic operations that we'll have is, the first one is an inner product. The inner product actually will multiply the entries of one vector with another. Now when we do this, and we'll see a little bit more of this in matrix multiplication, but we're going to multiply each entry of the column vector, x, with each entry in the y row vector, but we add them together. So we'll multiply the 1 by 2, and we will add the 3 times 4, and then we will add the 5 times 6. So the inner product of these two vectors will be 44. Two vectors are considered orthogonal if their inner product is equal to 0. And what orthogonal basically means is that consider two vectors that in space that form a 90 degree angle. In other words, they're not related to each other, or they're independent. The next operation we have is the transpose. The transpose of a matrix inverts the rows and the columns. And it's denoted by the apostrophe symbol. So therefore, if we have matrix A as 3, 5, 7, 2, 6, 9, 1, 8, 6, going across in the rows, A transpose will be 3, 2, 1, 5, 6, 8, 7, 9, 6. Similarly, for a row vector C512, C transpose will turn it into a column vector of 512. When we add and subtract matrices, it's actually pretty simple. Simply, what we're going to do is to add matrix A and B together, we're going to add the corresponding elements of each of the matrices to obtain the resulting matrix. So for example, A plus B equals this new C matrix, we take the 3 plus 4 and put that into the same element of the C matrix. We take the 5 plus 2 and do the same thing in the C matrix. They will be the corresponding elements of the two matrices that are added together. 
So it's important to note that if you're going to add two matrices together, they have to be the same dimensions. For subtraction, it'll be the same thing. The two matrices will need to be the same dimensions, but we will subtract the corresponding elements from each other. Now, sometimes we'll multiply a matrix by a scalar, which is a single number. In this case, we only need to multiply the scalar by each element in the matrix. So if we did lambda A to get a new matrix C, we would end up taking this lambda, which is 3, and multiplying it by each entry in the corresponding matrix. We end up with 9, 15, 21, 6, 18, 27, and 3, 24, 18. Matrix multiplication is a bit more complicated. The way we do this is by adding the product of the row entries in matrix A by the corresponding column entries in matrix B. Again, the matrices will need to have a certain format, but right now we're going to have 2 by 2. So in this case, A times B is going to be equal to 2 times 1 plus 3 times 4, and that will correspond to the first element of the new matrix AB. Then we will multiply 2 by 3 times 3 plus 5, and that will be the second element of the first row of this product matrix. In the second row, we will do 5 times 1 plus 10 times 4. That will be the first entry in the second row. And then 5 times 3 plus 10 times 5, and that will be in the second row, second entry. So therefore, the product of the two matrices will be 14, 21, 45, and 65. Now when multiplying or dividing matrices, it's important to ensure that the inner dimensions are the same. So if you have a matrix A, which is 2 by 3 in dimension, and matrix B, which is 3 by 2 in dimension, the multiplication is possible because the inner dimensions are the same. So what we're looking for is these numbers in the middle based on the dimensions. So the columns of the left matrix have to equal the number of rows in the right matrix. So here we have 2 by 3, 3 by 2. The inner numbers are the same, therefore we can do the multiplication. The resulting matrix will be a 2 by 2 matrix, and we see that that's denoted by the number of rows in the first matrix by the number of columns in the second matrix. If we have matrix A, which is 3 by 4, and matrix B, which is 3 by 4, the multiplication is not possible because the inner dimension items are different.